Okay. Recording is started. Okay, so I promise you that uh, in the during the break uh, I would have set up uh, the this very very small example on how to run uh, the Express uh, web server. I just copied Shh. I just copied uh, this code from the slides as you could do as well, okay? And put it into Visual Studio Code just because it's very convenient, okay? And uh, so this is called the just first example slides. I put it into the folder where you will find the rest of today's lecture, okay? Uh, not yet on GitHub, but just uh, copy and paste, okay? So how do we run it? Two ways. One is node with the name of the file. On the slide it was index, uh, because we they decided to call the file index, but you can call it uh, w uh, in the way you want, okay? For the exam we will give instruction, we will ask you to call the file index, so we can start it with a single command, but, um, you know, here to experiment you can do whatever you like. Um, so, let's run it. Okay, so server ready that is listening to this port, 3000. Actually, the listen takes a callback. I didn't say it before. The callback is called when the server is ready, <laughs> as you can imagine you know, from, the, from the print, let's say. And uh, so how can we test everything is working? Well, just open a browser, okay? Well, I just uh, spoiled, okay. So localhost 3000, enter. Okay, surprise. <laughs> In the meanwhile, uh, Firefox wanted to update something from me. <laughs> okay, localhost 3000, okay. <laughs> you get the answer from the server, okay? The browser is something, it's a client that sends HTTP request. It, do, it does send get request for everything you put it you put it you put here on the URL uh, field okay so HTTP localhost well actually I missed HTTP but it added HTTP okay localhost 3000 uh, colon 3000 okay let's inspect it as we did before okay open the inspector that is also available here as developer tools, etc. Network tab, actually the network tab works only when uh, it's open before doing the request. So let's do it uh, once more. And you see the request, get localhost for slash, that's here, get HTTP localhost 3000. And that's a response, hello world, in raw format or interpreted format. Uh, actually, the content type here was not specified or maybe it was text, I don't know. We will check it. That's what was sent back as body of the HTTP request and response, okay? In the response of the HTTP protocol, there was a body that contained actually what are the, uh, 12 characters, hello, space, word, exclamation mark. Okay, headers, you can expect the headers. Uh, request headers, okay, and response headers. There's no content type, so well, the browser guess something. It takes uh, what is sent back and just show it as a text, okay? It, it tries to guess what the content type would be. Of course, that's not the best way to proceed. I mean, this is just a very, very first example just to show you how to run a first web server, okay? Uh, and then we will make things uh, better. You see, let's, uh, let's change uh, uh, the some, something in the program. Hello, hello, Enrico, okay? I save it, okay? I run it again, what happens? Nothing changes, why? Because you need to restart the server, okay? Oops, this, this server, okay. 
until you restart the server, nothing changes because the server has already read the JavaScript program. It doesn't read the program again and again, okay? Just read the program, knows how, what to do, and run, okay? So how do we restart the server? You just interrupt the program, control C, that's a typical sequence of uh, uh, keys uh, that you need to press in any system. And you start it again. Let's try. Okay. Hello, Enrico. So I reloaded the page. I resent the get request. I got a new answer. Okay. Um, so you see also the 200. Okay. Okay. Um, so every time you change something in the server, you need to restart the server. That's really, really inconvenient, right? Because you need to remember to restart the server. You made a modification, you test it, it doesn't work. What, what was wrong? Nothing. I mean, I just forgot to restart the server. That's why I told you, use this nodemon, which I already installed, nodemon, which is exactly as node, okay? What does it, what, what's, what's different? Let's change something. Le hello. What's Antonio, my colleague? Okay, let's save it. Okay, save it. Observe here. Okay, let's save it. You see that the Nodemon has restarted the server for us. That's much more convenient when you are developing things. And so we test it and we see the result. Okay, with the new code. Just convenience. Okay, not really needed, but very, very convenient. Okay, so we say that uh, each function needs the method the get, post, put, delete, a path, that is the URL that is being sent by the client. In our case, it was slash. We didn't put anything, so the first thing the browser asks is slash, the root uh, path. And then the handler, so the function that takes a request and response, rec and res, which has body, method, etc., query, and, and JSON and send. Okay? So, send, just send what we put here, typically a string or something like this, to the browser. Not very useful, actually, because we don't want to send back strings. Okay? Um, but it could be useful to say end. There's no, nothing to send. So, dot end means uh, give an answer which is empty in the body. Or set a certain status code. Here, the status code in the previous example was implicit, was added automatically. We didn't say anything, it was 200. Okay, no problem. Or we add a JSON, uh, which basically takes a, a, a reference to a JavaScript object or even a value and transform it in, in a JSON format and send it back. Actually, also setting the content type, but we'll see it later in the example, okay? Downloads, uh, well, not very useful because, um, I mean, just sending back files, but probably we won't do it uh, in this course. Redirect, you can redirect, but uh, again, not so useful. Um, one thing I would like to mention about Express is that it can be um, extended very easily, okay? So, in short, before sending back a, re a response, you can call a number of functions that can process your requests, okay? Um, uh, think, uh, for instance, about something that you need to do for every call that has been uh, done to your server, okay? With this approach, with the previous approach uh, up method, you have an app method, so get, post, etc. For each one of them, you should write your code, right? There's no way of calling something else. Well, actually, you can define a function and call a function inside your code, but you need to remember to do that, right? Instead, we can say directly to Express to use a specific, so to call a specific function every time uh, uh, a request comes from the client, okay? 
And this function has this signature. So it takes two rep parameter, rec, next, and rest, like uh, you know, the, the callback function that we pass to do our processing. Indeed, it's a function that in which we would like to process either the request or the response or whatever. And then it takes a third parameter, not to for don't forget the third one, next, which is the next function to call when you finish doing your processing. Because all these functions get called one after the other, so need to be chained. And so you need to call in the end the next function. You don't really know what it is. Uh, it's an express issue. It's express problem to decide which f next, which is the next function. It's another middleware. It's uh, it's internal function, whatever. We don't care. We just uh, have uh, the reference to the function. We call it, you know, like in JavaScript uh, with the JavaScript approach. No problem. Okay. So you can insert the middleware on all r routes. So any resource, any sp resource specified in the request. Just up use with this uh, reference to the callback, so this function, or with the specific callback, uh, with specific paths, okay? Um, okay, uh, this will be very useful, okay? In case we need to add uh, functions that do operations uh, for certain uh, requests, like, uh, let's say, check for authentication and stuff like that. So this app use will be useful to add these functions automatically to be called for each request. Okay. Um, another very useful middleware is this express static, static, uh, where you specify a, a name of a directory on your server. So in the from in the path of uh, where you run the server. And all the files under this directory are served automatically if you receive a GET request with the name that corresponds to the file in that directory. Okay? So actually, you don't have to write up GET with each one of the URL. This is very useful because uh, like you have uh, some resources, like images, like stuff that you would like to serve using the web server. You just need to say that everything in that directory can be served automatically if you receive a request that matches the file name, okay? So let's say that uh, in your public uh, folder um, you have uh, uh, files like hello.html or even subdirectories with other files Everything gets mapped uh, as a part of the URL, depending on the directory name and the file name, okay? You can also remap it uh, under an additional portion of um, uh, URL, okay? If you don't want to serve it from the root, you want to add some, you know, prefix, you just use this syntax, okay? So, use. Uh, with a, a, um, a string that presents this uh, URL that you would like to add, and then everything works as before, okay? Service static request is really the first step, to, you know, to build more complex stuff. Um, okay, so just a few more words about uh, what we can write in terms of uh, um, uh, name of the path that we can handle with Express. Well, uh, we can basically write anything that is uh, um, uh, handled by HTTP. So any URL which is valid can be handled by uh, the Express. Uh, and also we are facilitated, uh, so it's easy to use uh, some specific type of URLs because uh, they will be interpreted for us by the Express Express library, okay. So like a URL like this slash search question mark, and then there's a a, a, a set of uh, uh, parameters that can be specified in the form of name equal to value. Well, uh, this is of course handled by by um, 
express. You just need to specify the part before the question mark. And the rest will be available in uh, a property of the object rec. In particular, in this case, for parametric request, you just need to access the query um, property. The query property will be an object, and this object will be uh, populated with, uh, uh, um, uh, with properties that have the same name of what, what has been written after the question mark. So filter, uh, plus, uh, whatever else, and so on, and the value will be the value after the equal sign, okay? So basically this URL gets processed for us and we just need to access rec.query to access the information. And the same happens for post and, pu and put um, because we have rec body and in, if in the body you have some uh, information, this uh, is read by Express and if the content type is set correctly, like in JSON, you can uh, already have the variables available uh, as before for the query. So rec body dot user dot pass. This is a way to specify an object that has two properties, uh, named user and pass, uh, with two different values. Okay. Uh, for some of these requests, you don't need to do anything. It's automatic, like for the first one. But for the post and put, you need to add a middleware. And how do you add the middleware? Like before, app use and this, uh, the name of the middle that you need to use. Which, by the way, is already available in Express. So in short, it's uh, just a, a, the result of a function that you need to call on Express, the, uh, the Express uh, uh, object that you imported in the beginning. Okay. So everything is already contained in the Express package. You just need to remember to activate it, okay? This will be clear when we have uh, the full example. Uh, you can also specify the path in a more complex form, but I suggest you not to use, uh, you know, very complicated ways of specifying the path because typically there's one path for each action. So you don't need to mix up path together just to av avoid to duplicate code, okay? Just make one path specific for each action. We will talk about path uh, in a minute. One very, very important thing that we can uh, use is uh, uh, the parametric path. So uh, some parts of the path can be preceded by the colon uh, symbol, so the two dots, okay? Uh, if we use this syntax, basically the path will match anything that uh, starts as slash users, that is a fixed part, but then match anything between the two slashes, and then it requires that there is books, a fixed string, and then anything after books, okay? And this anything, uh, in addition to matching the, the URL, so to, uh, so our callback gets executed when the request arrives. Uh, is also made available in rec params uh, property of the callback. So we don't have to go to the string and look for the string, look for the slashes, uh, where is the first slash, the second slash, the third slash, and uh, uh, take the substring, etc. Is ev everything is done automatically for us. Okay, why is this useful? Because sometimes we need to specify uh, IDs or, in, in, or keys that uh, help us locate objects, okay? And so the URL is not fixed. There's a part which is fixed, like here, users, and then I want to, to uh, access user number 34, okay? but could be another number, could be an anything, okay? So this part of the URL is not fixed, it's variable. But we would like to have the number at a certain point in the code because we need this number to you know, access the, uh, the database maybe or, or, or something else, okay? Just remember that these parts are strings. You know that uh, then there's the automatic conversion, strings, numbers, and so on. Just be careful. That's a JavaScript behavior. Just be careful that everything works. Or convert it explicitly if you, if you need it, okay? 
you can also uh, use uh, regular expressions uh, for parameters but again this is not uh, very very useful because again we would like to have separate URLs for different things no not to mix up URLs too much there's a uh, last uh, middleware that i mentioned here is the login middleware middleware which is called morgan that's an additional package that you need to install you are now you understand you know that javascript uh, is plenty of packages okay and in your project probably you will have uh, i don't know maybe 10 packages when you submit your final project because you have uh, a few of them because they are useful or they you need to to implement some function that is available in formal app library or a package so um, what is this uh, for? Uh, this Morgan, which is used uh, very sim in a very simple way, app use Morgan, and then you need to pass a, a string that uh, tells uh, Morgan uh, how much logging you want. Do you want uh, very detailed logging or just very basic logging and so on? We suggest to use this dev string, okay, th that means uh, uh, I, don't, I don't have the example, we have it later. It prints every request that comes from the client. Very useful for debugging because at least you see the method and the URL that has been requested from the client. And you don't need to rely on accessing the client side, so the browser, or doing console log somewhere in your code that m might miss uh, some pieces and so on. It's automatically done, okay? Fine, there are other useful middleware, but we will talk about them uh, when, when it's time to, to talk about them for authentication, etc. Okay, so let's come to the third and last part for today and then the example. How to write uh, good uh, um, URLs, right? Now, that's the only thing we miss. I mean, it's not small, <laughs> it's an important part um or, or what we are doing while developing the web service so deciding which are the urls that uh, retrieve our data because remember the application architecture single page this will be loaded the first time okay when we will have react it will be loaded automatically from another web server we don't care about this but now we need to design uh, URLs that loads data for us, for our application. Yes, there's a question. The middleware, the middleware is, uh, is used to, uh, no. no that's, I wanted to go back to the middleware, yes. The middleware is a function that is uh, called uh, between uh, the time when the request from the client is received and the time at which your callback is executed. So before executing your callback, so what you write here in short for the method, let's say get, post, etc., this middleware is executed, provided that you tell Express to execute it, okay? So it's just an additional code that you would like to execute before executing the code of your callback specific for that method and URL, okay? Uh, so express.static is an example? Yeah, express.static is an example and it does everything automatically, so in short, uh, it express.static returns a function that will and rec res next and it will check if rec contains uh, you know the path that we specified it will uh, process the request it will do res uh, send and will send the content of the file okay depending on the station we set the content type and uh, all the stuff okay so this xp static is a middleware already made for us just to simplify serving static files okay Okay, thank you for the question, so we can proceed and discuss uh, the rest, which is how to build the URLs for our data, okay? So we are in this condition, we have the application, the client, 
For us, it's a web uh, browser, but can be anything else, as we said in the beginning. We have database, uh, uh, we have the web server. We, we should expose some services. So first of all, we need to decide the format of the communication, because the protocol is HTTP. The format is JSON, as I told you. Again, it's not mandatory. It could be XML, for instance, yeah, XML. Okay, it was very common f until a few years ago, for instance. And nowadays, uh, JSON is probably the most common because it's much more user friendly, it's more readable for the developer, and not that complicated, not, not that much complicated to parse and to handle by the application. So let's have a look at this JSON. Okay, that's a pronunciation. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation, so of course, very well suited for JavaScript, but it's used a lot, quite a lot, also outside JavaScript. Okay, so it's a lightweight data interchange format. So in short, it's, uh, the syntax is very similar to JavaScript. It's a standard, etc. It has a media type, we already saw it, uh, uh, applications like JSON. So in the content type of the HTTP protocol, we can set this uh, media type, MIME type actually, to be more specific. And uh, the structure is very similar. This is just, uh, uh, the, uh, the, sorry, the, the formal definition, okay? Uh, there are primitive types, like in JavaScript, okay? There are strings, numbers, true, false, null, okay? Very similar to JavaScript, no undefined, okay? That's just null. Um, it must use double quotes, not single quotes. So this is not JavaScript, it's just a format. And in this format, it's mandatory to use the double quote and the single quote are not supported. Are supported as a single character within strings, okay? As everything else. But not for defining strings. It has arrays and objects with the uh, uh, squared brackets and curly brackets, like JavaScript. And of course, it has no objects. The, this is... Uh, not a binary format, there's no, no way of representing complex objects. I mean, complex objects can be represented, but in string forms. So you cannot put references here inside. References means nothing when you change a computer. References are address in the memory, in short, and, and means nothing when you change a computer. So this is just an example. You can, you, you can define an object, so you open the, 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 the bracket, the curly bracket. You define an object, which has a number of fields. Note here. The the, um, the 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 what's the name? This stuff. Uh, the the, the um, ah, I forgot the name in English. Sorry, lapsus. The the um, quotation mark. Okay, after a while, <laughs> right? Okay, the quotation marks. So um, every every property will have a quotation mark. And every string value will have quotation mark. The only thing that has no quotation mark are numbers, integers, uh, floating points, doesn't care, doesn't matter, or the three strings, uh, true, false, null, null. Okay? These are the only thi three things that have no quotation mark because they are values. Okay? Nothing really special. I mean, you're familiar with JavaScript, it looks like JavaScript. This could be valid JavaScript, actually. Right? You, you can define an object like this, no problem, right? Just remember that you need quotation mark on the left side as well. There are uh, predefined methods in JavaScript uh, that can handle JSON very easily. JSON is a, a predefined object, all uppercase, and you have stringify and parse, okay? Stringify is very useful because it converts uh, a reference to an object, an array, or whatever you have in JavaScript and converts it into a JSON format, to, it means into a string, okay? Everything, if, I mean, the JSON representation is a string, a string that starts with the curly bracket, with the square bracket, or whatever else, okay? Uh, it works recursively, also nested objects and arrays, so basically, until you can solve the references and you take uh, and you arrive to an object or an array, you can expand it into the form of Java of uh, JSON. Okay? Of course, it cannot uh, handle functions. There's nothing to do if you have a reference to a function. Nothing you can do to to express a function in JSON. Okay? 
It doesn't take the function code, okay? Just uh, ignore functions, okay? And undefined properties. You can do both uh, the object to string conversion and the opposite, string to object conversion, okay? I must tell you that uh, typically we don't use this uh, function. Why? Because it's done automatically by Express. If we install the middleware, the correct middleware, this is done automatically by Express, okay? Uh, and also on the client side, it will be done automatically for us by somebody else. So the JSON stringify, by the way, is very useful also for debugging because uh, it's a way of converting uh, any reference that you have in your program and print it in a very readable way, okay? So you console log JSON stringify something and you can print whatever it's inside that object, except the function, of course, but not really a limitation. Okay, so we solved the problem of the data format. We need to find a good way of representing the service endpoints, so the URLs, the, the, the path that we use to represent the action we would like to do, okay? And we recommend this convention. It's not really mandatory, but it's a good guideline. So at least in the beginning, try to follow it. And then when things get complicated, uh, either ask for us for advice or maybe, I mean, take to try to take reasonable decisions, I mean, okay? But if you start from these guidelines, uh, it's a very good starting point. So uh, basically, often in our programs, we need to have uh, access to, to different type of uh, um, uh, elements, either single elements or collections, so a set of elements, okay? Um, so for collections, they are the simplest thing, a set, a list uh, of objects or items, whatever, just say slash and the collection name, okay? Student courses, uh, um, you know, um, uh, items. Uh, item is a bit generic, I will say it later. Like, uh, you know, whate whatever you need to have in, in your application, okay? Um, <coughs> okay, employees uh, or, don't know, uh, laptops, uh, whatever you want. And then a single item is represented by the name of the collection and an identifier within the collection. Typically, every item, every single item has an, a unique identifier. So you can use name of the, of the collection slash item ID, okay? So like uh, the matricula, the, the student ID for, 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 for the students at the university or the course ID for the courses or the serial number for the laptop or whatever you want, okay? Or something created uh, uh, when you created the item, okay? Also from the database and so on. It's enough that it's unique. If it's not unique, it doesn't identify a single item, so it's useless, right? Could be a unique name as well. I mean, like the username, okay? Uh, in case you have usernames. Okay, best practice. Try to use nouns and not verbs. These are collections. They are not actions. They are collections. Plural nouns, just, you know, for convention. And concrete names, not abstract names, like uh, as I was saying before. Item, item, everything is an item. And it's useless to call something item. I mean, I see, I see the, the path and that's item. Item was either the course, uh, the, the, the student, the exam, the, uh, the desk, the laptop, the, the room. I mean, I don't know. If I use a specific name, I remember better what, what this uh, uh, path means uh, and what is, what is supposed to do, okay? And then you have the actions. You typically have, uh, let's say, those five actions. So retrieve the information that will map to the get. Get the information from the server. Add some information, update some information, delete from some information. And maybe you want to have a more complex retrieve action like searching for information, okay? Just to give you a, a less uh, trivial example, okay? How do we represent these actions? We have the HTTP verbs, 
uh, well, methods, we call it the methods, okay? In REST, they call it verbs, but it doesn't matter. We, we don't need to stick to REST uh, if you know what REST is, okay? So this is just generic. We don't uh, really ask for REST, okay? So, uh, so these are the HTTP methods that we saw in the beginning. Get, post, put, delete. And you can use them on collection, so on the name of the collection, or name of the collection plus the identifier of a single element, so on single elements, okay? And there are combinations that make sense and others that doesn't make sense. You see, there are five combinations that make sense. Get can be used on the collection to get everything, but also on a single element to retrieve the specific information of that single element. Post makes sense only in collection, because post is the add action. So you add it to a collection. You cannot add something, an item to another item. Uh, they don't grow, I mean. You add an item to a collection. So this action doesn't make sense. Put, uh, put you update a single item again. You don't update a whole collection. In theory, it could be possible, but it's better not to do that. And delete as well. You delete a single item, so you need to have uh, the identifier of the item you want to delete. You can delete everything, but uh, again, it's not a best practice, best practice, okay? So let's uh, see an example. Let's say we have uh, a collection, docs, could be laptops, could be, uh, we, we cannot delete student courses. We can have courses, we can delete courses, so courses is not, uh, um, is not given anymore. So uh, docs, you do get docs, so get, that's a HTTP method, and that's the URL that you decided to define, okay? With the rules that I said before. I have a collection, I call it docs, plural name, specific name. Get docs, we list all docs, so we'll give you the information about all docs that are present on the server side, typically in the database, okay? Uh, get docs in, uh, number 12, uh, it will show, so we'll get the info about the doc with ID number 12, okay? So get can be used with both type of URLs. Post will send the information about the new dog. Uh, it's uh, black, uh, it's tall, and so on. Um, this will create a new dog item, potentially returning a new dog ID. Okay, that's the best practice typically. But uh, it doesn't make sense to call it on a single item. Okay, the dog 12 is already there. Okay. Uh, put, we say that don't uh, update everything together. Uh, if exists uh, a specific item, it will be updated. Okay, let's say we, wa we would like to update uh, the dog and say the owner has changed. Okay, let's update the owner of the dog and we make a put call to dogs12. Okay, and the server will understand that it's different even if the party is the same, dogs12. If I call it with get or I call it with put, that's a different. That's different for the server. And we have a way to handle the different methods because we write up get or up put and there will be two different callbacks, right? And delete again, delete and dog a specific number, okay? There are plenty of suggestions on how to create these URLs. We would like to keep this stuff very simple, okay? There is the rest, uh, convention, but it's more complicated. I mean, we try to give some guidelines for the most common cases, and then you are more or less free to experiment, okay? I mean, if you are in doubt, just ask uh, during the labs. We will have a lot of labs uh, in, in, the next, in the next weeks. Uh, there's still one case which is important, so the relationship. Sometimes you need to find, let's say, all courses uh, that has been attended uh, by a certain student, okay? So it's not uh, the collection of courses, the whole collection. It's not a collection of students. What is this? Well, actually, that's a relation, a relationships, a relationship. So um, that's a way in which you can create the, uh, the path, the URL for this uh, specific request, okay? 
identify the first collection, an element in the first collection, and the second collection that you would like to, con uh, to connect to the, first, to the specific element of the first collection. Like here we identify the student and then we'll take courses that are related to that student, okay? Of course, this means that uh, on the server side, in the callback, we need to know that uh, this path represent this relationship and we would like to return this information represented by this relationship. But this is decided by us, actually decided by the ones that are defining the paths. So actually the, 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 uh, uh, the way of uh, uh, returning information from the server to the client. At this moment, it's us. Sometimes the APIs will be provided by somebody else like you would like to interact with Google APIs, they already designed the APIs, so you need to stick to their uh, uh, path that they, they decided, okay? Here, we are deciding our path ourselves, okay? Or other examples could be the opposite, like uh, all students enrolled in a, co in a course, so you take the, the collection of courses, you identify a certain course, and you ask for the students, okay? But this meaning is decided by us. This is just an example on how to create a, a path which is reasonable, okay? Um, when you have to perform complex searches, maybe the path is not enough. You have different values about with, and you variable number of values, for instance, which is always difficult to handle. And like uh, the, 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 the HTML, uh, sorry, the HTTP protocol, as a way to express these complex URLs. So this complex, let's call them paths. Even though the part after the questions mark is not typically a path, okay? Because there's no slash. It's just a, a, a series of uh, key equal value pairs, okay? Like if you take more uh, complex uh, APIs, this is just an example of, let's say, Twitter APIs, but uh, I'm not sure it still exists, but anyway. Like, uh, you would like to uh, ask only for a certain subset of items in your collection, okay? Let's say this is the name of the collection, but again, this is Twitter doesn't follow this convention, and it has its own convention. And you would like only to have uh, items that have a screen name equal to Twitter, API, and uh, uh, specify, I don't know, count two. I don't really know what this means. If uh, those that have count two, or, or you only want two, uh, two items. I don't really know. This depends on how who defined the API decided to implement the API. And of course, if you did it yourself, you know it. And please document it, okay? Put a comment, uh, and just to remember, for you and for us when we will read the, the program, okay? If somebody else has done the implementation, if they did the implementation, they tell you what they, their implementation uh, does, okay? So, uh, just be aware that of the fact that we can specify also a certain number of parameters with their values. You know, and this is a valid query, and this, uh, this is done uh, in, uh, typically in GET operations, okay? Because it's, it's the operation that retrieves the information, because typically, uh, the, what you write here is a filter, okay? When you add something, there's nothing to filter, right? And so on. We, we said we don't want to update in bulk and uh, delete in bulk, so that's all. Just get. Uh, we can return errors. How we return errors with uh, this uh, system? Well, that's the HTTP status code. I, I've sh shown before the dot status method, and you can put a number inside. Well, 200 is the default, but if you want to change it, you can do that. And the most common thing is the 404, okay? That is not found. And then you can also attach a body. Again, if you want to attach a body, also in case of errors, please use the JSON format because it's very convenient for us. It's very well integrated in our, in our system. We are returning data with the JSON format. We can return also error information in JSON format. Typically, error information are strings, nothing more. So, I mean, very easy to encode. 
Okay, so there are plenty of guidelines on how to design uh, this uh, path uh, that actually are APIs. Okay, APIs means application programming interface. So a way to interface our client application with the server that has the data and that can work on data, okay? Google has its own, if you look around, Facebook, Meta, and whatever, uh, have their own uh, uh, guidelines, uh, style, and so on. Of course, because when things get uh, big, if you don't have guidelines or, or rules, uh, everything gets messy, okay? In our uh, systems, probably we will deal with uh, maybe 10 APIs for the exam, not more, okay? You will define more or less 10 paths, not not more, not less, sometimes even less, okay? If you do, if you did a good, a good job, okay? Of course, you, you can define 100 paths, that's fine, but probably that's something that could, could have been better, okay? Um, how to create them in Express? And then we will look at the example, okay? Let me see, yeah, we are more or less at the end, so we have time for the example. So that, that's what we are, you are going to implement on Monday in the lab, okay? That was originally planned for Tuesday, so we had a little bit of more time, but I mean, we, we still fit. And we will have a second lab still on the API. So if you don't finish on Monday, don't worry, there will be a second lab still working on the APIs, okay? Um, so these are just the regular HTTP requests. I mean, like the hello world before, okay? We asked for slash and return hello world. We asked for some other u URLs, so what we call path until now. We will get some JSON in response, some, some strings, okay? We just need to be careful how to define uh, these uh, uh, URLs. If they are fixed, no problem. Slash docs, your application deals with docs, slash docs, no problem. I mean, it handles docs, uh, why you shouldn't use docs in the, in the name of the API, no, no problem. If you have the ID, we already saw before, just be careful, uh, the ID can be any string, can be a number or, or a string, depending on how you define the ID, okay? If it's uh, just a number or a string, unique string. Well, we need to use this syntax in Express. This is just an Express thing, okay? But it's followed by other libraries as well. Uh, so the colon before a name that is just for us, that, that will allow us to recover the value from the URL without uh, programming additional code, without searching for the slash, etc. Okay? Uh, for the request and the response uh, in the body, we will use JSON. So in short, uh, uh, in the request, if we add the, the JSON middleware, that is just a single instruction in the beginning of our program, everything will be interpreted automatically as JSON and everything will be made available for us directly as references to objects and arrays in JavaScript. So we don't have to write a single line of code, okay? We just accessed the rec.body object and there we will find all the properties uh, corresponding to what has arrived through JSON. Okay, we don't need to, mm, you know, see the JSON string. For the response, we just need to use the JSON call on res that will automatically call the stringify and so on for us and take the object that we pass and convert it into JSON format. So it's very, very simple, okay? And then there will be the validation issue, but this was a big topic, uh, especially in this course uh, focused on security, and we will see it later. So let's see very, very basic code. The code that I published uh, today in week 03 folder in, on GitHub is basically this stuff, okay? Um, it's very simple. A lot of things are still missing, but we will discuss them uh, later, okay? On, on Tuesday, actually. So how to implement a get? Well, get answers. You remember the, uh, the example that we are uh, you know, carrying on during the lecture? We have this uh, a question and answer website that we would like to develop. Well, some, somewhere answers 
and questions and answers are stored on the, on the server in the database. So we will have a database with two tables, uh, questions and answers. And we first need to retrieve, let's say, answers, questions as well, but just to show, let's, let's have a look at answers. We will uh, call a function, okay, which is not uh, shown here. This list answers that will go to the database, run a query like a select and so on, retrieve the information and give it to us in the form of a promise. That's why we learned promise last time and you tried to work on promises in the lab, right? Because this is an asynchronous operation. Everything that we do here until we finish, if we don't uh, use promise or await, we block the entire web server. We cannot block the entire web server for everybody, not just for our request, for everybody. So this stuff needs to be implemented with asynchronous callbacks. Promises is fine, okay? Or the await async, okay? So you, uh, you call the function with await and you make the function async so you don't have to write the promise. But since we already wrote the promise for the database, the promise is already available. So either you use then or you call it with await, okay? You, we will see in the code both of them, okay? Here is just uh, the then because it was easier to write, <laughs> okay? Uh, but in the code, in the example code, you'll see the await as well, okay? So when we have the result, well, very simple. The result is here. Right, is the value of the resolved promise. And we do res, JSON, answers. That's the reference to the object. We need to decide what is this object. This object will be an array of answers. Okay, that's a, what it makes sense. Right? It's a list of things, so it's an array, fine. But we decided ourselves. Let's say we want to have a specific answer. Answers slash ID following the convention that I showed you before. So this ID will be whatever ident identifier of the answer we have. Let's see, let's say we have numbers because numbers are typically easy to handle, but can be anything like the course ID is not a number at the Polytechnic, right? So this part after the last slash will be interpreted as an ID and we can access it uh, through this syntax, rec.params. Uh, and that's the name we used it, exactly the same. If we write uh, ID here, that's ID. If we write uh, identifiers, identifier and so on, okay? So it's matched automatically for us by Express. Then we do exactly the same. Uh, we go to the database, we do a query, select, uh, and so on, where ID equal to what we got. If we find something, we return it, uh, then answer, rest JSON answer. It's an object, it's not an array, it doesn't matter. JSON can encode anything, can encode an array, can encode an object. Do we need to return an object or an array? Depends on what we decide to do. The important thing is that we decide something we document this behavior and we stick to this behavior, both on the server and on the client. If we ask for a specific answer, we expect uh, an object. If we ask for all answer, we expect an array, okay? Post, so we would like to add an answer. Post, answers, okay? Um, okay, so here there's no ID because it's a collection, we said we add to the collection. Uh, how do we take the information about the answer? Somebody has to tell us, uh, you know, the, the title of the answer, uh, the content of the answer, the score, and whatever we decided the last time. Well, we just take it from rec body. If we send from the client to the server the information in the form of JSON, this will be automatically decoded by Express into body and made available as a JavaScript object, decoded from the JSON object, okay? Provided that we say to Express to use this uh, JSON middleware, okay? That's why you, you see here the JSON middleware because in the get there's no body, so no need for the middleware. But I mean, this is just an addition and works for every request. 
just a get has no request, has no body. Yes? So in this case, the object will have the attributes of the JSON that they're passing around. Yes, in this case, the answer object will have the attribute that we have specified in the JSON when we did the request with the post. Yes, if we want to do validation, we can do answer dot title, make sure it exists, it's not undefined, and check if the title is correct according to our rules and so on. But validation is for next time, okay? Thanks. Uh, okay, and then we go to the database and create the answer. So it would be an insert instead of a select. Fine, I mean. And then, well, this is very simple stuff, uh, so we didn't return anything. Would be great to, uh, to return something to say just, you know, everything was successful, like rest end. If we don't return anything, when the callback is finished, uh, uh, Express automatically returns everything is okay. Not really the best way of programming, okay, but now we will look at the example and we see more complete stuff, okay? The slide is small to fit everything. Uh, okay. Just the last piece of information, and then we'll move to the example. How do we test uh, this stuff? I mean, we develop a server, but we miss the client, right? So very, very simple request, like the get request can be also tested with the browser. You, you saw before, I, I put the URL, localhost 3000, hit enter, and it sent a get request. But how do we say send a post request? or a put request, or a delete request, okay? That's a bit more difficult. I mean, the browser cannot do it uh, automatically just from the interface. The normal user doesn't do this kind of things, right? So uh, we use uh, a Visual Studio Code extension. That's the easiest thing, but you can use a lot of other things, independent programs. You can, you can generate HTTP request with any program that uh, generates HTTP request. This, according to us, is probably the easiest thing to do, okay? That's why we suggest this. And we will test it now. Uh, how to use this extension? Well, you just create a file with extension.http, separated by these three dashes, and you can do, you can put the different URLs with the HTTP method, and if you do things correctly, this extension parses this file, which is just a text file, okay? And uh, it, a, a small button send request will appear, and it will send a request, an HTTP request, uh, uh, according to the method and the URL that we specify. It's better to see this stuff because it's easier. <laughs> I mean, it's easier to see than, uh, than to explain. So this is the code that you find uh, on the usual uh, website, right? Uh, so uh, in, the, in the course, uh, no, in the lecture examples, Okay, course material, just the slides. So in week 03, now we have QA server version one, because next week there will be, let's say, version fine, more or less final. And uh, uh, I loaded it in Visual Studio Code. That should be easy for you to do now, right? First thing you need to, know, you need to do is npm install, right? I already did it. Uh, I will not share the, the node modules, right? So, because node modules are uh, just uh, to be recreated by everybody of you. Uh, and uh, it's, it's large and doesn't give you anything in addition. I mean, it just, and also changes depending on the system you have. If you have Windows, Linux, and so on, there are native libraries are different, okay? So just do npm install and then run the server, okay? As I did before. So let's use node mod so we can, if we do modification, we don't forget to restart the server. Uh, index, index is the file to run, okay? Which is actually the file uh, I will show you now. So use strict, don't forget the use strict, please. Express, require express, require morgue and this is middleware to do the logging. El DAO, DAO is another file just to p keep uh, DB functions separate. Just copy this stuff for now and we will talk uh, as soon as possible about modules, okay? Once we have uh, also the something on the client side, so on the browser, so we talk about modules both here and the, in the browser. 
And then we create the express. We say to use two middlewares, the Morgan that is for the logging, and the express uh, JSON to interpret the JSON when it comes from the client. Okay? And then that was this, uh, you know, get. With thi this can be deleted. It's not useful anymore, but, you know, it's from, from before. And then let's say we have uh, API questions, and these questions return a promise. Uh, and uh, as we did before, with the value of the result promise, we do rest JSON questions. And if there's an error, we can simply stay, say, state uh, status 500, internal server error, and that's all. Nobody. At the moment, we don't care to send anything back in the, in the body. Okay? Very simple. Uh, just to have a look at the list, and then we will see better wha what does it mean. I mean, the list is just select star from questions. It's uh, just a query to be run on the server. It returns a list. Oh, so an array of objects, okay? We'll come back to this. Let's try to use it, because in the lab you need to use it. So I wrote uh, a file, HTTP, uh, API HTTP, and you see that uh, I have the extension installed. Don't forget the extension. REST client, uh, that's installed, okay? You will search it. You need to press the button, install it, okay? It's very... Uh, it's used very much, because without the extension, uh, nothing works. I mean, nothing in terms of the client works. So this HTTP file will not make this send request appear. Okay? This appears because you have the extension installed. And so we have get with URL. Actually, I used the uh, uh, port 3001, uh, because on 3000, we will have uh, the React uh, web server later. Okay? But no problem for this, we will come back to this. You need to write a request here, complete request, so HTTP and so on. Localhost means the local machine, just for convenience. The, the web server could be anywhere, but then you need to update uh, the web server running the, in this remote place. It's not convenient. So we put it on our machine for the moment, and uh, we have this URL. It's a good uh, thing to have a prefix uh, for URLs that uh, provide, provide data, okay? So like API or API version one, so you also have a version in case in the future you need to change. And then actually the name that you decided before with the rules with that we said, the collection or the collection plus the identifier and so on. Let's Let's try to send this first uh, um, request. So uh, uh, here in the bottom, there's the server running. We send the, the request. On the right, there's the answer. You see the raw answer, so exactly the HTTP response, which is actually text. So the first line, HTTP status, version status 200, OK. A lot of. Uh, 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 additional um, headers, not the content type header that has been automatically inserted by Express because you use the dot JSON. So Express remembers to insert uh, the content type ex and application JSON. And then you see there's an array of stuff, right? An array of objects. Actually, they're just uh, one. Uh, object inside the array, but that's valid, right? This is uh, JSON. You see the quotation marks around the property name and the quotation mark around the strings, not around the numbers, because JSON uh, lo uh, looks like this, okay? It has no dates, uh, uh, format, and so on. Anything must be either a string or a number. If you need to control this kind of aspects, you need to convert it yourself into strings and pass an object that has a string before the conversion to JSON, okay? So, uh, I, uh, otherwise, you know, it will look for some methods to convert the, the object into string and you don't really control what's coming out, okay? Um, so, we made everything work, right? 
You can also play with the DB, and if you install the extension, which I installed last time, the SQLite extension, this one, if you have files uh, and you register the, the, the files with the, with the extension for the, for the DB, you can see what's inside the, the DB. So there, are, there is just one row uh, for the table question, ID1, text, and so on. And answers, there are four rows. And that's a DB. And uh, it will be useful when we add something, right? To now there's nothing to see except wh what we got, okay? Uh, let's go back to index. Uh, so this uh, list question, actually it's in another file. This other file has been imported with this syntax. You can keep it everything in one single file, but as since things uh, will uh, start growing, it's a good uh, habit uh, to put uh, functions that uh, do specific tasks, like accessing the DB into another place, okay? Just to not, not to make the file grow too much. But you can keep it in the same file. Just stick to our syntax for the moment. So basically, here you, you open the DB, and you define all the functions to make them visible outside. You need to use this uh, variable exports, okay? Which is predefined in Node that makes uh, everything that is uh, attached to exports, uh, so a property of exports visible outside when you when you do require on the other side, like we do here, right? Do, where is the require uh, require DAO? Okay. Don't forget the dot slash. But we are helping you in the lab. Actually, next lab, I will be present and my colleague will not be not uh, because we divided uh, some, some labs in, in, and just for organization purposes. Um, so this is just a promise that you learned to write uh, in the last lab. So nothing really new. There's a select, uh, a select where with a certain ID. So you remember the ID with a question mark we use the syntax for the parametric query. Uh, here you see something can be uncommented, like uh, you need to print something. Use this JSON string if I, which is not bad. I mean, it's very useful for debugging, especially if you have a complex object because they are converted into strings and not e exploded into many things. And then there's an insert, okay? That's the last thing that we need to have here. Remember, uh, remember that we need to use function, not the arrow function here, because we use this last ID, okay? That's the value that we would like to return. To make it accessible, we need the function and not the arrow function. So index just uses this stuff. So get, uh, API questions, ID answer, just call another function and take the result, and how do you pass the ID? Well, very simple, you call on ID, and in params ID, there will be the ID, okay? If there is a problem, well, decide what to do. 404, not found, or error, depends, okay? Here you find the await syntax that you didn't find on the slides. You can use uh, the promise dot then, or the await syntax, but remember that in case of rejected promises, you need a catch to handle the situation, okay? Otherwise, you lose the, 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 the information. But you need to always have a catch on the server side because you don't want the server to interrupt, to stop, okay? So just be careful. Remember to have the catch if you want to use await. And then there's the post with the um, adding an answer. You create an object from what? From rec, body, and so on. And so on depends on what we send in terms of JSON, okay? So where are these fields coming from? They are coming from what we are sending here. Here we decided to put text, respondent, and so on. And here we have text, uh, text respondent, etc. cetera, on rec.body, okay? We create an object as the function expects, typically the same name, but here if the name doesn't match, we can change it. 
and then run the create answer, you get the ID, and we, res we return the ID. JSON with the number, no problem. A number can be encoded in JSON, it's just a number, okay? It will be a string, a number without quotes. So let's try the last two APIs, right? So get um, here with the questions, one answer. All the answer or question number one, the relation that we said before, the relationship. You see, we have an array of all the answer, four answers, okay? Let's try the post and see if it works. Yes, it works. 201 created, it didn't return 200, but 201. So uh, you saw something different, okay? So we decided to write 201 just to try. You can put 200 or nothing, so the default is 200, still fine. And the ID, the ID in JSON format, and five in JSON format is just a string with five, character five, okay? And uh, just be careful to make the last thing work. So the post, you need to add explicitly this header. Without this header, the server side will not interpret the content as JSON and will not decode the stuff as JSON, okay? So this is mandatory. And then our extension requires uh, an empty space and to put the body here, okay? We just need to copy this example and adapt these examples, okay? Uh, I think every f th this is more or less all. So, I mean, uh, let me just one last, very, very last thing. Let's make a very small modification. Let's say we would like to have two, 2,000, 200, sorry. Now I save, not here, it will restart. Save, okay? We have not monitor restarts. Don't forget to have it because if you make modification, nothing will work until you restart and you go mad and become mad, okay? Finding an error that doesn't exist, okay? So let's try it again. Oops, no, try it again, send. You see six? That's a new item, okay? Um, let's have a look at the DB. And you see the answers, there are six answers now, okay? Note that this ID is automatically created by the database. Have a look at the definition. I put the SQL here. You see this, uh, this is auto increment. It means every time you enter a new row, a new record, it creates a new ID, okay? If you need to start from scratch, you take this SQL, you modify it as you need, and you use it uh, SQLite browser, okay? No, SQLite browser, which you should already have, okay? You execute the, the SQL here, and you have your DB created uh, as defined in the SQL, okay? And I think that's all. On Monday, there will be lab. Don't forget about it. The room is big. If you want to come at both sessions, you can come, okay? Otherwise, stick to your group, and that's fine. Uh, I don't see questions, so that's all for today. And I will put the text of the lab online just when I'm back in the office, okay? Thank you. See you Monday.